You're listening to the Forever Pick Podcast with Bobby Paul. 1696. Let's go. Light him up. Thanks for the introduction, 1690. Today we're going to dive into the Ebony Project, a project started by Bob Taylor and Kurt Listug of Taylor Guitars. If you don't know the story, this is a warm, fuzzy episode for sure. And if you do know the story, you're probably going to learn a few things you didn't know before. Today, telling us this story is Paul Tobias, second generation owner of a guitar store that I grew up very near. And they were the first dealer in Illinois to carry. If you're in the market for a Taylor guitar, I recommend you don't purchase one until you check out the Tobias Music website. Links are below. Also going to have links below for a lot of the videos for the Ebony Project that Taylor Guitar is putting on YouTube. um, Because it's going to be fun to explore a little bit afterwards. First and foremost, in my last episode, I threw out the idea of asking people for reviews on either iTunes podcast or any other platform. If you're on another platform besides iTunes, I just ask you to give me a little screenshot and send it to me so I could put you in the bin. And because I missed an episode last week, basically everybody who did it won. So let's quickly go over the list of people who need to contact me at the email listed below, foreverpickhost at gmail.com. Three words, forever pick host no s in there on picks it's not forever picks it's forever pick host at gmail.com i'd really like to hear from you got four weeks from this date let's just say monday the 16th of july you have one month you got till the 16th of august to claim your prize i'm going to kind of customize the prize for each winner i want to give them what they're going to use the first winner is g-i-b-k-e-l Gibkill, you left a review on iTunes. Uh, the next winner is Puppy Buddy. The next winner is Nick in the States. And the final winner is KPSAIR. Nope, one more winner, Orlick456. One, two, three, four, five winners. Those five people can contact me. Uh, if you guys, you know, if you use a medium thin, I'm going to thick i'm gonna put the right thing in your hands i'm gonna ask what kind of guitar you're probably playing it on make sure you get the most out of this and if you haven't left a review and i know you haven't because there's only nine on itunes leave a review on each episode i'll announce a winner or two if you didn't win before you always got a chance to win in the two-week period where no one leaves a review So I just go back to the original pile of people who haven't won any time people don't leave reviews for a two-week period, which is most likely going to happen. So I appreciate you all getting on that, and I rediscovered Tobias Music at a recent vintage guitar show. Paul's story was so incredible that I picked up my phone and started recording, and the guitars were amazing. Lost the video, and I'm really sorry about that because some of those guitars were beyond anything some of us have ever seen in our lives, including me. When I couldn't retrieve the video, Paul was kind enough to schedule time uh, out of his busy day to reiterate the whole story for me over the phone. And I want to thank uh, Tobias Music for that time. And Paul did a great job of sharing the true story. And let's jump into... The Ebony Project story told by Paul Tobias of Tobias Music in Downers Grove, Illinois. Your uh, your mom and dad started Tobias Music in in 1978, so happy 40th. You know, last year we celebrated 39th anniversary, but technically you start your 40th year at that part. Right. You know, so... Um, yeah, well, if we're going to uh, do something in the fall to kind of uh, mark the occasion. Um, but, yeah, it's just a fun little store. Taylor Guitars only precedes you guys by four years, 1974. Yeah, so we, yeah, Taylor Guitars started in 74. I think uh, no one has records that far back, but we, we were the first dealer to carry Taylor Guitars here, here in Illinois. 
Um, and the best we can tell that we've been with them about 35 years. Wow. And, um, you know, 35 years and no one heard of Taylor Guitars. They're just starting to make their mark uh, uh, nationally. Uh, as the story goes, uh, Kurt Listig, who's co-founder of Taylor Guitars, he had a station wagon, and when they built a bunch of guitars, he would load up the station wagon and get on the road and go to guitar shops around the country and, uh, you know, show off his guitars out of his uh, station wagon. So they, they, they got, you know, they started way in the beginning. It's a very, very simple process, and, you know, pretty much now they're, they're, they're leading the industry. There are no dummies there. They know that uh, your average consumer can't afford one of the top-end American-made instruments. So they branched out uh, to make them in all different price ranges. And, uh, you know, that's what we see there. Uh, 100, 200 series are extremely popular uh, at this point worldwide. Uh, you know, some of that African ebony, <laughs> and we're just seeing the beginning of it right now. Uh, we tell some people, uh, be prepared to be blown away as this stuff starts making it out to market. Um, you know, the, the ebony they're, they're using is coming from Cameroon, Africa, this little spot on the globe and is West Africa, and that is the only place on earth that it's still legal to harvest the ebony trees. All the other species of ebony, um, uh, the governments have cracked down on that. They're, they're all endangered. Uh, they've all been over-harvested, um, so you can't go cut down the trees anymore. If you look at violins and high-quality guitars, um, Black ebony is what everybody has used for 200 years on musical instruments. Um, and it's always been pitch black, and that's obviously one of the characteristics of, of ebony. Um, you know, it, it, it's a hardwood, so it doesn't wear out. It makes a great fingerboard. Um, it also vibrates at the right frequency. People don't realize how much uh, the neck of your guitar... Uh, affects the tone of your guitar. Um, if, if you put brick on your fingerboard, your guitar is not going to sound very good. If you put glass or ceramic on your fingerboard, yeah, it's a, a hard substance, but it's not going to vibrate right. So they figured this out many, many uh, centuries ago, that ebony is the, the, the wood that everybody wants to use um, for fingerboards and also bridges. You think of a bridge on a guitar... You know, that's helping to fan out the vibration to the top of your guitar. So if you used an aluminum bridge, I don't I don't think it would vibrate right, and the guitar would sound worse. So, again, ebony is the, the wood of choice, but, um, you know, Bob Taylor, who is, uh, uh, you know, very much uh, in, into uh, wood conservation and everything, he, he did start researching this. And the main... Ebony mill, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I get the story straight. Um, the main ebony mill, ebony, not, not quite a plantation in Cameroon, Africa, was coming up for sale. And Bob Taylor and his partner Kurt Listug, along with uh, another company in Spain, started researching um, possibly buying this ebony mill. And this ebony mill, is, I, I, I do believe, supplies about 75% of the ebony for guitar builders and violin builders worldwide. So when they started researching that, they started talking to some employees about how the process works. You know, before, before we sign on the dotted line, let's get a feel for this. And they started talking to employees about, how, you know, how does it work? How does the system work? What's your routine in the morning? And they said, well, you know, 20, 30 years ago, a lot of the trees were close to a few of the roads that they put in the jungle. We go cut it down, uh, split it into chunks, carry it out on our backs to the road so we can put it on the truck and the truck haul, haul it to the mill. And, they, and the employee said, one thing that's a real issue now is all the trees close to the road are gone, so we got to go way, way out into the jungle, cut these trees, cut them into smaller pieces so we haul them out a greater distance, get them on the truck, and get them to the mill. 
Um, mm. So part of the discussion turned to like how many trees do you need to cut down? And talking to the actual workers, the ones that I, I, I wouldn't call them lumberjacks, I don't know what you would call them, um, you know, they started explaining their whole process and, and uh, they, they were looking for this pitch black ebony. And they said they would go out and they would cut down the tree at the trunk. Once it tipped over, they could tell if the ebony was pitch black on the inside of the log. Where a lot of the ebony had this vanilla streaking through it, uh, cloudy ebony, streaked ebony. Um, and as it turned out, they were, anytime they would cut down a tree that had a hint of this marbling effect or vanilla streaking, as I've heard it uh, referred to, they would leave it on the ground and keep cutting down trees until they found the black one. So as Bob Taylor's interviewing some of these, he asked them, well, how many trees are you actually cutting down to get get to this black stuff? My name's Lou Carlos. I'm a studio producer based in Chicago, and I'm a former music critic with the Chicago Tribune. Now, many people say that it's the effects pedal or the guitar that makes a huge difference, but I want to point out something before I go into this demo. Picks make a huge difference. Let's just say you have an ordinary pick and you play all the way by the bridge. Most guitar players know that that's going to have a different sound than if you play by the pickup or play up by the neck. However, the pick is often one of the most underrated aspects of playing. So what I'm going to do is take you through this forever pick and let's test drive it. Let's see what it can do. Okay, are we uh, kicked on? I can tell you right now from playing this pick, it does a better job of reproducing an old Fender sound and feel in terms of the amplifier than some of the boutique amplifiers that claim to Remarkably, be you can't see the amp on camera. This is a Marshall. It is not a Fender. This is part of what the pick is doing in terms of the articulation. This is wonderful. This pick has made a believer out of me. I hope it makes a believer out of you. I'm Lou Carloso, Chicago-based record producer. I love it. The forever pick. May it live forever. So as Bob Taylor is interviewing some of these, he asked them, well, how many trees are you actually cutting down um, to get get to this black stuff and and they said on average we're cutting down 10 trees to find one tree that was actually black that they would use for guitars and pay full price i guess that was part of it too if it had the streaks in it it was b grade and you wouldn't make top dollar on it so it wasn't worth them going through all that work hauling it out of the, the jungle if it had the streaks in because they didn't make any money off it Oh, boy. So, you know, here for decades, this has been going on, cutting down 10 trees in order to use one. So Bob Taylor also brought in some experts. He, that was obviously an eye-opener for everybody. So, you know, we're, what are we going to do here? So with some of the research they did with the experts, they found at this current pace that it might be – six, eight, ten years, and, and we're close to wiping that tree off the face of the earth. And at that point, pardon the expression, we're screwed. What are the guitar builders going to do if there's no more ebony? So Bob Taylor went to the Martin factory. He went to Gibson, went to Fender, went to some of the Asian builders and said, hey, if we only have this streaked ebony, would you guys use it? And, you know, one by one they said, well, we want ebony, uh, it's a hard wood. It doesn't wear out on a fingerboard. Um, we know it vibrates at the right frequencies. So if it's streaked, I guess we'll have to dye it. But I, I guess if that was all that was left, I guess we would have to use it. And Bob Taylor said, well, guess what? You're going to use it because I just bought the ebony mill, and I will officially be supplying you guys with the ebony. So now all of a sudden there's 10 times the amount of ebony available than six, seven years ago. Yeah. So, um, you know, kind of a, a, a historic moment, not just for Taylor Guitars, but uh, for our industry. 
Um, he received an, a, a congressional award, some kind of business practice, top business practice award. Uh, you can find pictures on the Internet of John Kerry presenting him with this, cool. this crystal award. I've seen it out at the factory. It's uh, absolutely beautiful. It's a crystal globe. And they're basically crediting Bob Taylor with saving this species of trees uh, from being wiped off the planet. Yeah, that's clear and obvious because the previous owner would have went right through all of it till it was done and found something else to do. Yeah, found, found a different wood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ebony's the traditional one. So um, at this point, it's not just cutting down trees and using all the ones we cut down. He's also been uh, instituted the whole program of replanting and, and making it a, officially a sustainable resource. So and training these villagers who are making pennies a day for all their work. Um, he's uh, changed the whole economy for this area, the, the Cameroon, Africa, because he's paying them more. He's tr buying lunch. These workers wouldn't stop for lunch because they couldn't afford lunch. they wait till they got home and have dinner. Now Bob Taylor's providing lunches for them, and he's made them all real happy, which in any business, happy employees work harder for you. They're more dedicated. Um, so it's a whole society change because of this this the, this ebony project that they've been working on. So it's really fascinating. Um, a lot of videos on Taylor's website. Uh, you yeah. can dig up YouTube. Um, and I, you know, when I'm bored here in the store, I'll just pop one on. I've seen most of them four, five, six times. But it's just really cool to watch that. You know what he's actually done, not only for our industry, but uh, but but for the planet. You know, that's a, another species of trees that won't be wiped off the planet because of over-harvesting. Uh, and, and, and we're proud to be a Taylor Guitar dealer, to be, uh, I, I tell everybody, it's not a business relationship with them. When, you, when you've been dealing this long with the same company and a lot of the same faces, it's more of a family relationship with them. And like I said, we're really proud to be with them for this long. Um, to see all the cool things that uh, the, the company is doing. Yeah, and you guys are getting a pretty nice selection. So I, I would I would want to uh, recommend before anybody commit to any tailored guitar, if you can't get to your store in Downers Grove, then then get online. And in the the links below right now for people we'll to click, click on. on. Oh, very good. And uh, we're, we we. We like to uh, showcase a lot of stuff on uh, Instagram, uh, Tobias Music Guitars on Instagram. Um, it's kind of a library, so uh, the stuff that we have here in the store. Nice. And, uh, yeah, even myself, uh, though, hey, I work here every day, I go on our own Instagram page just to page through all those guitars. And for the most part, we're showcasing all the different woods that are available. I would highly recommend anybody going to search those videos, um, you know, listen to the story. Um, you know, it, it, more industries need to be like the guitar industry. The, the guitar industry is very focused on sustainable and renewable resources. Um, we are getting close to the point where solid wood guitars are are getting too expensive. Most people can't afford them. But we're going to see a whole new line of these woods that none of us ever heard of um, come into production uh, for guitars. Uh, Tasmanian blackwood uh, from New Zealand, that's another one that's becoming very popular. It's a very abundant tree. It's, it's harvested responsibly. It's a sustainable project, but it's an incredible tone wood. Um, Lutz spruce, uh, kind of a weird name, L-U-T-Z is a spruce that's making it out here in the, in, into our industry. It uh, vibrates at a, a slightly different frequency than Sitka spruce, but it gives you the warm, rich tone. Um, and, and I can go on and on of all the new woods that are going to start popping up. And what this is going to do is take the pressure off some of the woods that we've been using for centuries, uh, Indian rosewood and the Honduran mahoganies, uh, even the maple from here in the United States, Canada, um, all those forests are stressed. They're, they've been over-harvested. And by bringing in new woods, which I might term exotic, and the only reason I use that word is because we've never heard of them before, 
Um, people are going to fall in love with the visual beauty and, of course, the tone of these woods. And little by little, it takes the pressure off the ones that we've been using too much of. Um, so I think, uh, you know, because of Bob Taylor, I've got to throw uh, Chris Martin into the conversation because Martin Guitars is doing the same kind of stuff. Uh, Tom Bedell from Bedell Guitars, his company is Two Old Hippies. They're based out in Portland, Oregon, or Bend, Oregon, I'm sorry. Um, those three guys are big players in this sustainable wood project. Um, so it, it's an exciting future for the guitar industry. I know another project that uh, Bob Taylor is working on, and uh, he'll make it clear he's not, not going to be around to see the results, and you and I either might not be around. Uh, but they're working on a tree farm in Hawaii, and they're experimenting with growing mahogany in Hawaii. Nice. Um, obviously, koa nice. comes from Hawaii. But a lot of the tropical trees that we, the tropical hardwoods that we use in our industry, he's attempting to grow them out there. Because the climate is the same as Honduras? Sure. Uh, and, you know, these trees will take 60, 70, 80 years to grow maybe till it's big enough so we can use it for guitars. But I, what he really wants to do is grow his own supply of wood where, you know, the production can say, well, we're, we're planning on building mahogany guitars this week and rosewood guitars next week. Let's call up our farm and, and have them get us a couple logs. Right. And, again, keeping it sustainable, renewable. So if they're cutting two down, they're planting three more in the back so that yes. the future can use them. And I, I wasn't, what a vision that is. Who would have ever thought of, of doing something like that? I hope that's always safe. You know, 100 years from now when all of us are dead, the guy who's running that is the guy that Bob would want to run that. Sure. I, I think uh, they're they're a brilliant company. They're they're keeping all the pieces in place uh, to be the, the leader in our industry uh, for, for many, many years down the road. And uh, I think the number one goal is he wants our grandkids, he wants our great-grandkids, to be able to play affordable wooden guitars. And without his efforts, and I, I mentioned a couple other people, he's not the only one focused on this. Uh, he is leading the charge. But, you know, we were heading in the direction where none of us were going to be able to afford wooden guitars anymore. And, you know, that's his focus. His, uh, grandkids, great-grandkids should be given the right to play very high-quality wooden guitars. Uh, it looks like we're heading that way. Um, they do have a, a factory in Tecate, Mexico, uh, which is 42 miles from their American facility. Um, I've uh, had the pleasure of spending some time down at the Tecate factory uh, last year, 2017. Um, the, the most state-of-the-art guitar factory you have ever seen, just mind-blowing. Wow. Um, but, you know, people think, oh, it's cheap labor. That's why they're doing it yeah. down there, um, because uh, you know, almost giving you the picture, it's a sweatshop, and boy, that is so far uh, the opposite of what it really is. Um, you know, what it, when we think of a, a factory in Mexico, keep in mind Martin has a factory down there, Fender has a factory down there. Um, the property to build the factory is more affordable. Uh, the construction costs to build the factory is more affordable. Their gas bill, their electric bill, their their water bill is more affordable. Sure, labor is more affordable. Taxes. All yeah, everything. So yeah. it's all those little nickels and dimes that really add up to an affordable guitar. It's not just uh, them them paying them a dollar fifty a day or something like that. Their 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 employees are treated extremely well. Um, and I tell you, that was one of my highlights of my career here at Tobias Music was to be able to spend some time down at the Taylor Takati Mexico factory. It was uh, just fascinating down there. Yeah, it sure did. <laughs> that and a little McDonald's for me. Anyway, <laughs> well, <laughs> I want to thank you so much for your time today, Paul. No, I appreciate the, the call. This is great. Um, I, I am flattered to be able to help get the word out there. Um, that the industry is heading myself. in the right direction, and um, you know 
was a lot of positive things happening. And I I would agree eight or ten years ago we were kind of towing the line a little bit. Is something had to be done. And leave it to the, the likes of Bob Taylor and Chris Martin to get the whole industry to focus on this. And, and I think everybody would agree those two people – um, were the ones that changed everybody's thought process about how we should continue with this. And uh, like I said, I think the future for guitar building is, is real bright right now. That's really cool. I hope I get the chance to shake that man's hand someday and say thanks. <laughs> yeah, come out to a NAMM show one of these days, and uh, we'll introduce you to Bob and Kurt, just wonderful people. I think it's inevitable I'll be at a NAMM show. So thank you so much, Paul. Okay, yeah, take- please stay in touch. And for any reason, show ideas, complaints, threatening letters, you can send us a note at foreverpickhost at gmail.com. You can send us snail mail at foreverpickpodcast at P.O. Box 210366, Bedford, Texas, 76095. And feel free to leave a message at the Forever Pick Podcast 24-7 hotline at one. 1- 312-834-7057. Your message may be used on the air, and if you don't want it put on the air, just mention that in your message. And no worries, don't write it down. This information and much more is available at foreverpick.com. <laughs> Honey, have you seen my scissors? I borrowed them to fix the guitar, here. Oh, well, I can't find the needle I was using, either. Honey, you must have dropped that needle in the guitar. Uh-oh. Now you'll have to take it all apart. Can you imagine looking for a needle in a guitar stack? <laughs> so long, folks. <laughs> July 22nd, the Chickatawagua Summer Guitar Show and Swap Meet at the Masonic Hall in Chickawatagua, New York. August 4th, the Fort Worth Guitar Show at the DFW Marriott 3500 Championship Parkway, Fort Worth, Texas. August 12th, the Lake County Musician Swap Meet at Redinger's Florida Twin Markets in Mount Dora, Florida. The Chicagoland Vintage Guitar Show, August 11th and 12th at the Lake County Fairgrounds. I will be at that show. Stop by the booth, say hi. August 18th, the SoCal World Guitar Show at the OC Fair and Event Center, Costa Mesa, California. 